appreciate it. I really appreciate your faithful support. And uh, I am from Charlotte, and I'm going to go to Charlotte tomorrow. But I'm not staying. I'm leaving. <laughs> I grew up in Charlotte, and uh, I was just talking with Pastor Wise about uh, uh, he knows where I grew up at, and my daddy was a truck driver, and uh, he'd come home from driving the truck, and we'd go hide in the woods. He was a mean guy, and uh, but uh, he had a massive heart attack and got saved on his deathbed. God changed him, amen, and uh, uh, I was in Charlotte, down in Charlotte, when I was, my mother was dying with cancer, she had seven major operations in seven years, and uh, she died on October the 8th, 1965, in Mercy Hospital, you know where that's at, and, uh, but two ladies from the Independent Baptist Church there, down the road from on Nations Ford Road there, they came by and uh, two ladies knocked on our door when I was about 12 years old and my dad went in there and uh, they won my mother to Christ and uh, and mother came down to my room and she said, son, we're going to go to the Baptist church on Sunday and Sunday we went to the Baptist church and preacher of that church, uh, Charles Dustin, he kept coming by and witnessing my dad, and my uh, my dad kicked dirt all over him, cussed him out, told him not to come back, but he kept coming back, and my dad had a massive heart attack, and uh, he was in the intensive care unit there in the hospital, and the preacher came, my sister and I and my brothers, three of us, we were out there in the intensive care, outside the intensive care unit, and the preacher came in, Preacher Dustin, he said, first thing he said, he said, children, start praying. He said, I'm going to go witness to, that, witness to your dad again. So we went inside the intensive care unit, and and we could hear him outside. He, he said, Oscar, don't you think it's time you got saved? And... Uh, my dad could hardly speak, but he uh, he went like this, motioned for the preacher to come closer, and he whispered in the preacher's ear. He said, I believe God put me on my back, so I look up at him. And he got saved. And uh, one week he lived after that. You could tell that he was. Uh, the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And my dad was really new in that. You know, he was really changed. God changed him. And the first time I ever heard him say he loved me after he got saved. So um, it's good to be saved, amen. And it's good to get people saved, amen. Um, my wife is here. Uh, I was in the United States Navy and uh, backslidden and met my wife in the Philippines. She came to America, and uh, she was born and raised a Catholic, and she came, uh, we were down in Louisiana, moved there after I got out of the Navy, and we got, we got married in San Diego, California, and we moved to Louisiana. Two ladies from Independent Baptist Church came by and won my wife to Christ. She, was, she thought she was saved before she wasn't saved, though. Most Catholics are not saved. And uh, they they came by, two ladies. It was Southern Baptist Church, too. They came by and witnessed to my wife. She got saved. I came home from work. First thing she said to me, she said, let's go to the Philippines. And uh, I said, are you crazy? Why would a Filipino go back to the Philippines if she's already in America? You know, we had, we had, uh, I was making uh, $30,000 a year. I was a drugstore manager, the largest drugstore in the New Orleans area. And she wanted to go back to the Philippines. I said, why do you want to go to the Philippines? She said, well, she said, my people need to be saved. She said, they're lost. So I told her, I said, don't say nothing to me again. I said, I'm used to eating steak, potatoes, not fish and rice. 
so and I said, don't say nothing to me about going to the Philippines. She didn't say nothing to me, but she said something to the Lord. And uh, so 1982, uh, I heard a missionary speak at Hiles Anderson College. Dave Carter, missionary to Japan, he's been to preach to me like three times now in the Philippines. They're close by. And uh, Dave Carter preached, and uh, I, I went to a church on Wednesday night, and I said, God, okay, if you want me to go to the Philippines, I'll go. Just show me in this Wednesday night service. And I walked in the back doors of the church that night in South Chicago, and there's a slide of a little Filipino kid on the wall. And uh, my wife was sitting toward the front, and I walked down the aisle, and I surrendered to go to the Philippines before, this, before the invitation was given. And she was sitting toward the front, and I sat down beside her, and I whispered in her ear. I said, honey, we're going to go to the Philippines. She about fell off the chair. And, uh, but, uh, and then the invitation was given. I nailed at the front, and then the pastor come nailed down beside me. And he said, Lane, why'd you come? I said, God's called me to the Philippines. He said, oh, I knew that three months ago. I was waiting on you to tell me. I said, why didn't you tell me that three months ago? <laughs> but uh, we started off. We traveled all over America. Had a, uh, My fourth daughter was born in a state park in Tennessee in a travel trailer. And uh, I delivered the baby. My wife had a lot to do with it, though. <laughs> And, uh, but uh, uh, God has been really good to us. He's really good. And uh, I appreciate my wife. She prayed for me to go back to the Philippines. I didn't think God ever used me. And, but uh, praise the Lord. God can use anybody. Amen. Amen. God save anybody. God can use anybody. If you'll just surrender. I want you to look at your Bibles this evening uh, for a little while. Uh, Romans chapter 10, please. And I want to speak to you on this subject this evening, five hows. Five H-O-W-S's. Five hows. Five hows. Look at Romans 10 and verse 9. Can we stand for the reading of God's word, please? We have prayer cards here at the back, and like for you to pray for us, we have six grandbabies, and we're traveling all over America trying to catch up with our grandbabies. I told my children, I don't care about you, I don't care about the grandbabies. <laughs> Romans 10 and verse 9. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Okay, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this evening. Thank you for Unity Baptist Church and thank you for their... Uh, love for souls and faithful support pray god that you'll bless now and holy spirit help me to say exactly what you'd have me to say and holy spirit help me not to say anything i shouldn't say fill me and use me this evening help me be a blessing and encouragement a challenge to christians and pray lord there be somebody without jesus christ they'll come to know jesus as savior this evening now bless we pray the preaching in jesus name amen thank you, you may be seated there's 7 billion people in the world today. When I went to northern Samar, never, never been a Baptist there. I went there in 1985. They never heard what a Baptist was. There was one guy that was saved there, and he was having a Bible study. He had three or four other people saved. But 
man, he had told me that he had been praying for me, praying for somebody to come to Northern Samar. That's what the Bible says, right? Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, he'll send forth labors in the harvest. And uh, so we went there in 1985, started the first Baptist church there. But there's people all over the world today that are without Christ. We have Filipinos today preaching in Cambodia, Thailand, Taiwan, Africa. Uh, they're, they're all over the world today, Vietnam, preaching the word of God. China, uh, Thailand, everywhere, preaching the word of God. People uh, need to hear the gospel today. And people have lost their way. Jesus is the way, right? And people have lost their way today. Uh, I heard this morning that there was... Since 2001, there's been 30,000 suicides in America every year. Something's wrong. And I, all, I, I read the news in, in the Philipp- and even in the Philippines, I read about the heroin addicts in America today. People have lost their way. They need Jesus today. People need Jesus. And people today, even, even the young people graduating high school, don't even know how to read, right? They don't know math, math, mathematics, a lot of them today. So uh, there's a great need today for people to be saved. I went to Northern Samar. Uh, the, uh, Northern Samar is uh, predominantly Roman Catholic. And uh, they believe that Mary, Mary is a mediator. In fact, in the Manila, they have a 26-foot statue of Mary. And, um, you know, in Luke chapter 2... It says that Mary's cousin was Elizabeth. So, and Elizabeth was the mother of John the Baptist. So they must be relatives. And uh, Mary uh, was called the handmaid of the Lord. That means the handmaid means a female, a female slave. Mary said, my soul doth magnify my Savior. In the Philippines, uh, you know, there's a great need. Uh, they believe, you know, uh, drinking. Uh, they drink when they're little kids, starting little kids drinking. Over here they drink, uh, over there they drink San Miguel, uh, San Miguel beer. Uh, they drink Tandawai rum. In America they drink Bud Stupider, not Bud Weiser, amen. And Miller Low Life they drink over here. But I went to the Philippines in 1985. It's predominantly Catholic. But the governor of Northern Samar, when I got there, was a Seventh-day Adventist. And my wife started praying for a radio station. That was one of her dreams, to go to the Philippines and get a radio station. She started praying for a radio station. And about six or seven years ago, uh, I walked into the, the – there's, there's a radio guy that has a – there's a radio station there. And it's called Power FM inside Katharman, the town there. And I asked the, uh, the, uh, the guy that had the radio station there, I said, uh, how do you get a radio station? He said, well, you have to go fil- through the Philippine Congress, and you have to pay millions of pesos. And I was listening to what he was telling me how to get it, and I said, well, I never do that. And all of a sudden, he said, you want a radio station? I said, yeah. He said, I'll sell you mine. I said, how much you want for it? He said, I'll take a million pesos. That's about $25,000 then. Less than three months, we had $25,000 bought on a radio station. So we have a radio station. DYJC is 24 hours a day. Uh, and a lot of people come. We just had a guy that's been listening to our radio station. He's a retired pilot for Del Monte uh, Pineapple. He flew uh, all the executives all over the Philippines to different meetings. And uh, he's 70 years old. And he was listening to a radio station. He came on to our church one Sunday morning about six months ago, seven months ago. And he came in the church building, asked one of our students, he said, is this Lighthouse where they have the radio station? And he said, yeah, this is Lighthouse. And he said, wow. He said, I want to I want to, I want to sit in your service. Sunday morning, he sat in our service. I gave the invitation, came forward and got saved. First thing he said, he said, let's start a, let's start a church in my house. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, I have a two-story house, and I want to start a church in the house. He said, I have a two-story house. I'm retired. And he said, you can start a church in my house. One of our first graduates, uh, one of our graduates that graduated last year, he took the church. 
Last Sunday was a week ago. We invited their church. They had 30 adults in six months from his church that came, that just started in his, and he just now went to Manila. He gave the house to the pastor. So uh, there's a big opportunity in the Philippines to preach the gospel. But the Bible says, how shall they, okay, verse uh, 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's the first verse I memorized. I was in a church in Crane, Missouri, and a guy preached on hell. I came forward and got an assurance of my salvation. I was 18 years old. And a man named Mr. Lee showed me from the Bible verse, and I memorized that verse that night. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The way to be saved is by believing on Jesus Christ, right? Amen. Because it says there in verse 14, how shall they call on him whom they have not believed? When we believe on Jesus, we're saved and we're born again. We have, we're, uh, in the Philippines, they have Catholics that believe that you've got to uh, be a member of the Catholic Church. You've got to go to the Mass and you've got to listen. You've got to pray to Mary and all that uh, to be saved. But that's salvation by works. Over there, we have churches called the Iglesia Cristo. Uh, it was started by a guy named Felix Manalo. He believes that uh, uh, they teach that Jesus is the Savior, but he's not God. And they say when Jesus comes back, their church building is going to go up in the rapture. They have another guy over there called Kibaloi. Uh, he's in Mindanao, the island below Samar, the, next, the second largest island. His name is Kibaloi. He has plenty of members. He believes that he's the appointed son of God, and the people believe him. So there's a lot of religions today, but religions don't save. Only Jesus saves. Only Jesus is the one that changed my life. The only Jesus is the one that changes people's lives. It's only Jesus Christ today that changes people's lives. And uh, the Bible says, how shall they call on him whom they have not believed? So you got to believe on Jesus Christ to be saved. People need Jesus Christ. It's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved me. Thank God for his mercy. Amen. Thank God that he was merciful to us and we can be saved by God's mercy. It's nothing we can do because we're guilty before God. It's like standing in front of the judge and the judge says, oh, you're going 100 miles an hour in a 35-mile-an-hour speed zone. What do you got to say for yourself? Well, I'm a good man. I'm really good, judge. I help everybody. I give to the poor. Judge, you don't understand. I'm a good man. And the judge said, well, I'm not judging you for that. I'm judging you for going 100 miles in a 35-mile-an-hour speed zone. You are guilty. You better change your attitude. You say, oh, God, oh, judge, I, I understand Judge, have mercy on me. I'm guilty. So uh, it's not by being good. It's only if, if somebody has mercy on you that you can be saved. And the judge said, you've got to pay. How much is the, how much is the, how much I got to pay, judge? Well, let's say you got to pay $400. You got a big speeding ticket. And you look at the judge and say, I don't have any money to pay. I don't have $400. And the judge says, well, you don't understand. You must pay or you're going to go to jail. You must pay or you're going to go to jail. But I have no money, judge. And judge says, and, and you look out there and look for somebody to have mercy on you. And somebody comes up, your friend, and says, hey, I'm going to pay $400 so you can get out of jail. You don't have to go to jail. Oh, man, why did you do that? He said, because I love you. Jesus Christ loves us, and he paid so we can get out of hell. We don't have to go to hell. That's why we ought to tell people about Jesus Christ. How shall they, how they, how shall they be, believe on him they, whom they've not heard? Northern Samar never heard. Listen, if God called me to Northern Samar, how could I tell him no? I couldn't live with myself like that. The first how, how shall they call on him whom they have not believed? They must believe to be saved. 
they have, we have a church that was right beside our building. We have a three-story building right in the center of Katharman, the capital of northern Samar. 1987, we went, we, we, there was a three-story, a two-story house there, and uh, I told our people to pray, and, and they prayed, and God gave us $9,000 to buy that two-story house. We were in San Jose, 18 kilometers away from the town, and that two-story house was leaking and the water coming in. So I said, well, God gave us a two-story house, and the water's coming in here. In the, in the rainy season, the water just pour in, it leaking. I said, well, let's pray that God will give us a new building here. Sure enough, God gave us a new building right in the center of town. We've got a three-story building right in the center of Katharman now. You know, uh, God, where God guides, he provides. If God tells you to do something, he'll, 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 he'll take care of you. So uh, how shall they, how then shall they call in whom they have not, uh, whom they have not believed? How shall they call on him whom have they have not believed? How shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? That's the second how. Uh, they have not heard that Jesus is the way. I went to Northern Samaria, they never heard uh, we had land in San Jose. We got 5,000 square meters. We saved our money. We bought 5,000 square meters, a half a hectare coconut land for $3,000. And But I didn't have money to build a building. And they said, oh, Pastor, that's no problem. The, the, the men said, we'll build a building for you. I said, how are you going to do it? They said, watch. So they cut down the coconut trees, and they dug holes in the ground, and they put the coconut trees in the ground, and they put a Nefa roof, and this guy made me an old pulpit, and I got up and started preaching. And uh, that was in April 1985. We started April 1985. In April 1986, we're going to have our first anniversary. And I told my wife, I said, honey, we want to have a big crowd on our first anniversary. And she said, okay, you want a lot of people? And I said, yeah, we want a lot of people. And she said, well, they'll come if you kill some pigs. They have what, over there what they call leech on, leech on pig. They'll take the pig and put it over the fire, and they'll turn it like this until it's crispy, and then they put some skin off the pig. That's called leech on. And so my wife said, okay, we'll kill three pigs, and we'll make some rice and invite the people to come. So we had a few people come, and I told the members, I said, now you go out and invite. We're going to have pig and rice. The next Sunday, I got up to preach. There's 1,046 there. The people like pig, and they like rice. And I preached, and there was 125 that came and got saved. We baptized 65. First anniversary. They they didn't all stay, though. But uh, last April, we had our 32nd church anniversary. And, you know, those people will believe because they heard. Amen? Uh, now think about that. How shall they believe in him whom have, they have not heard? How shall they call on him whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? You know, everybody needs to hear about Jesus. Everybody needs to hear about Jesus. And you know, I like to pass out tracts. Everywhere I go, I pass out tracts. I passed out tracts in Asheboro this morning to the lady in the motel and I said lady are you saved she said I got she said I've been over that church over there you're going to and she said I'm going to this other Baptist church here and she said I got saved I'm been, I've been saved already you know pass out tracks you know if, if we just pass out tracks here where we go when I first got to northern Samar we passed we had a, over 900,000 what I tracks in our dialect 97 dialects in the Philippines I, I, when I went over there, I started a new dialect. It's called Southern Dialect. The lady said, we understand English, but we don't understand your kind of English. So we started over there, and we, my wife translated a track. We had a church in Winchester, Tennessee, where my baby was born, where Rhoda was born. They printed this 900,000 tracks. We paid $900. For 900,000 tracks, we just paid for the paper. They had the ink. 
and they run it for free. We brought over 900 tracks. It says, Ampaagi Pakatushimaya, the way to heaven. You know, people get saved. They need to hear. People need to hear. I hear at Mount Olive. All over the world, people need to hear. We're out in the country. We're, we're, uh, uh, we have uh, two and a half hectares on the ocean. We had 5,000 square meters, and now God gave us 25,000 square meters on the ocean. Beautiful property. That's where we have our college campus. And uh, people need to hear, how shall how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? they gotta, they got to call. You know, calling on Jesus and believing in Jesus Christ. How shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? You know, John the Baptist was a preacher. And you know what he preached? John the Baptist preached Jesus. Amen. John the Baptist was a preacher. And he preached Jesus. You study Luke chapter 2. If you look at Luke chapter 2, look it over Luke chapter 2. Look at Luke chapter uh, Luke chapter 1, John the Baptist. Look at verse 76, Luke chapter 1. And thou, child, that's John the Baptist, shall be called the prophet of the highest. For then, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. To give knowledge of salvation unto his people by the remission of their sins. The only one can forgive sins is, is God, amen. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. How shall they hear without a preacher? Uh, we're, we're, we're training preachers over there. I have right now 15 preacher boys. I just sent two out to start churches. We have Bible college over there, and the island of Samar is the third largest island, but there's never been any Baptist churches there in my place, northern Samar. 26 towns in northern Samar, never been a Baptist church. So my, my goal is, my desire is to have a, a Baptist church in every town in northern Samar. Uh, on the island of Negros now, over there, there's like 4,000 independent Baptist churches. On the island of Panay, there's like 6,000. In the state of Texas, there's over 10,000 independent Baptist churches. When I came over here, this drove over here, we drove by so many Baptist churches. We have the first Baptist church in Northern Samar. What's the Baptist church for? The Baptist church is for preaching the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. People need to hear the Bible. Our children need to hear the word of God. We went over there. I knew that we could not reach the Catholic people, the men over there. It's hard to reach the Catholic men because they're so used to drinking. They got they got tuba. Uh, it's called that's fermented coconut juice or be vain. Drink from, from a little kid. So I started raising the, I started, we go out on Saturdays, we reach 1,500 kids on Saturday. We go out into the villages and we'll gather the kids together. There's like, there's like 15 groups that go out and they'll go out and gather the kids. And I tell them, I said, you don't, you reach, you get it, you teach at least 100 children before you come back. That's their goal every Saturday. Every Saturday morning, they go have extension classes. They go out to the different uh, Barong guys and villages around the town there, different areas around the town, and they teach the children. And they'll have five or seven extension classes, and they'll gather the kids together, and they'll teach them the Word of God. And on Saturday afternoon, we bring them to church because we can't bring them on Sunday. Our, our building is not big. This is a big building. Our church building is not this big. We can't bring them all on Sunday. We bring them on Saturday. So we'll bring maybe 150, 200, 300 kids on Saturday. Uh, Sometimes we bring five, 600 on Saturday. But Saturday afternoon we have our children's church, and then Sunday we have services all day Sunday for the adults and teenagers. But we, our goal was to reach the children. And we've had 
12 children from our extension classes go in our Bible college. We've got about 60 students in our Bible college now. And we're training them to go out and start churches all over. I think we, we have our, one of our first graduates, my wife's sister's married to a pastor. He started five churches already. His son, his son and daughter, two sons and daughter in our Bible college, the, all three are finished now, and his one is other church, one of his churches. So, um, how do you hear here without a you say, who's going to preach? We're going to preach. Hello. Everybody can preach. Everybody can be a soul winner. Amen. I cannot sing. I can sing in heaven. But my dad, my dad told me, he said, son, you sing like a dying calf in a hailstorm. So I can't sing, but I can preach. Everybody be a preacher. Everybody tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. So that's our job. That's what Baptists do. That's what John the Baptist did. He said, I'm preparing the way of the Lord. I'm telling you about Jesus. He's coming, and he's coming back. If he doesn't come back, we're in big trouble. Hello. If Jesus doesn't come back, you're in big trouble. Uh, that's our only hope. Amen. We're in a mess. Amen. Amen. We're in a big mess without Jesus. He don't come back. When my mother got saved, she'd always come and talk to me. She said, Lane, you better be good because Jesus is coming back. Amen. I got a mother in heaven. I got a father in heaven. I got a brother, 43-year-old brother, heroin addict, dead, 43 years old, heart attack. $200 a day habit. He's in heaven. They're in heaven. They're saved. I got a sister still living. But how shall they hear without a preacher? And preachers, John the Baptist was different. Amen? John the Baptist was different. He wasn't like the world. Everybody wants to please the world today. Everybody wants to please be like the world. Man, don't be like the world. You start acting like the world, you're in a bad shape, man. Amen? Kids today are crazy. I said they're crazy today. Man, they look like, wow, look like they're out of the zoo or something. I come back to America, I get culture shock. But I, I'm, I, I don't want the Philippines to follow America. I don't want the Philippines to follow America. I tell them all America. I, we just, just got a guy in our box, 59 years old. He means way his money on women. He came to our church and got right with God. He's in Bible college now, 59 years old. You pray for him. His name's Britt Roberts. He's in Bible college, first semester. Hey, I believe Baptists, uh, I mean, they should study the word of God. Amen. Yeah, because you're supposed to be a preacher. How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they hear? Baptists are not to love the world, neither things in the world. Amen. I got me a little house on the ocean. I don't have a big house. I don't need a big house, just me and my wife. I got a little house, and I'm happy. You know, it don't take much to make me happy. People are not happy today. They've got, not got everything in the world. Be happy what God gives you. Be happy you're still alive. Hello, be happy you're still alive. In America, in the Philippines, I tell them, uh, I ask them, I said, Buhi pa? And they always laugh at me. I said, are you still alive? Thank God you're still alive. My dad died when he's 50 years old. I'm 66, I can still play basketball. They call me Too Tall Jones in the Philippines. In America, I had my center in America was six foot ten. He could dunk it backwards. I'm six foot, and they said, Pastor, you're too tall. Filipinos are really short. They said, you got to play inside. No, I said, no, I'm not playing inside. Delicado, it's dangerous in there. They're going to hit me inside. I shoot three-pointers all the time. Hey, 
Listen, how shall they hear without a preacher? How? You think about that. How? There's need to be preaching in Mount Olive. There needs to be preaching in Asper. They need to be preaching in the Philippines. We need to preach the word of God. That's what people need. What do they need? They need Jesus. That's what they need. You need Jesus. You need the Bible every morning. You need to talk to Jesus. Let him talk to you. How shall he hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be what? Huh? How shall they preach except they be sent? Man, I, I, I know you love animals, but I, I tell you, listen, America spends more money on dog food than they do on missions. Amen. People going to hell, we got feed our dog. I'm not against dog. I had a dog in the Philippines, but number one priority to me is not a dog. It's souls. Win people to Christ. Because when Jesus comes back, it's not going to matter how many dogs you got or how, many, what you, uh, how big your house is. What's going to matter if you won somebody to Christ? And he's coming back. Amen. Archaeologists knows he's coming back because they found the ark. They found the 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 uh, they found the the wheels off the chariot at the bottom of the Red Sea. They know the Bible is true. Scientists will tell you the Bible is true. There is a Jesus. He was here before. There's more proof that Jesus Christ. Are you listening? There's more proof that Jesus was here and he died and buried and rose again than there's proof that George Washington was the first president of the United States. If you don't believe Jesus is coming back, you don't have your, 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 you're just not too smart. He came the first time and he's coming again. He said, I will come again. And we better get ready. The way to get ready is tell somebody about Jesus Christ. And get ready because you're going to give an account of yourself to God. Amen. How shall they hear? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they, uh, how shall they preach except they be sent? They, the, they send out missionaries from the local New Testament church. And the church sends them out. And souls are saved. Man, I have so many people saved over there. I've had a lot of people saved. I had a guy named Alan, Alan Delacruz. I walked by him one time. His wife, Filipina, he ran to northern Samar. He got one of our tracks. He came to church got saved. He was, he, he was one of our members of our church. Good, good member. Uh, he, was from, he was a Samoan from Hawaii. Got saved in the Philippines in, in my church. And he had a heart attack. The ladies were singing to him in the suite by and by when he took his last breath. That's the way to go out, amen. I like your song, Christ is all I need. He is all you need. Amen. You know, I, I fell in love with that song when I went to Yorkmont Baptist Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. We'd go to youth fellowships, and they, we'd ride on the bus, and we'd sing that, Christ is all I need. I fell in love with Jesus singing about Jesus. And I sing, inside the gate, inside the gate, a crown of thorns, I hear him say, when I step inside the gate. We sing those songs, I fell in love with Jesus. It's good to serve Jesus. It's good to win souls. Amen. It's good to invite people to church, see them get saved. Wow. God uses you to help people like that. Wow. Wow. I'm glad my wife prayed for me. If she didn't pray for me, I'd probably be dead. How shall they preach except they be sent? How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Oh, how beautiful. You know what that beautiful means? It means timely 
or belonging to the right hour. Belonging to the right hour are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. Wow, this thing gives peace. Money will never give you peace. I've had money. I have plenty of money. But money will not give you peace. I have money, but me and my wife were going to separate. If I stayed where I was at, if I didn't get right with God. But now, serving God, we have peace. How shall they hear? Except they be seeing. How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they call on him who have that not believed? Let me tell you this one illustration. I'll quit. I heard the story about an old missionary over in uh, Africa. He'd been there a long time. He knew the African people. And he decided to go to a village way back on the other side way a far away village he was going to visit this village and preach to these people and he was he came on top of a mountain and was looking down into the village and he looked and he saw this rock wall and he said well how is it that it's so dangerous here all the other people can see it and the other person didn't know it and then he came up and started going up and saying well look this is what the rock wall looks like and this is what the other people look like She's going to throw her baby to the crocodiles because they worship the crocodile. Over here, we worship our cars, we worship our boats, we worship everything else. But she, they worship the crocodile. Back up, she picked up her little, she picked up her little kid over here and started walking back toward the hut. And the missionary finally made it to where she's at. And he grabbed a hold of her and he said, Lady, how in the world could you be taller than all those crocodiles over there? And the lady said, How could you do that? How could you throw your baby to the crocodile? He was standing there holding his sick baby. He looked at the sick baby and he said, Why did you? She looked at the missionary and she said, I do not know about your God, but my God deserves my best. She got, gave God her healthy baby. Hey, God deserves our best. God deserves us to preach the word of God. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God and salvation to everyone that believeth. Hey, how? There's five hows. You better ask yourself that question. Look at them five hows. How shall they believe on him? They, how shall they call on him who had not believed? And how shall they believe on him that had not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? And if you do it, how beautiful are your feet that bring the gospel of peace to those that need it. Let's pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Jesus.